All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So today, we are going to be talking about a topic that, to this day, remains one of the most controversial events in the history of this game. And of course, I'm talking about the 300 stone compensation debacle, or controversy, whatever you want to call it. And for my older players out there, if you've been playing this game for, you know, three plus years, you probably already know what happened and you were there to experience it firsthand, so you don't need to watch this. This video is definitely more geared towards my newer players who have no idea what people are talking about when they say, oh, we should get 300 stone compensation for this, or, you know, they ask for 300 stones for every little thing that happens, because at this point, it's become a huge meme in the community, right? And the reason this is being brought up now, actually, is because uh, today, or rather yesterday, happens to be the three year anniversary of this event. A big shout out to Reddit user BraveWolf1 for posting this. And uh, essentially what happened, guys, was that on November 15th of 2017, so three years ago exactly, JP users woke up to find 300 free dragon stones in their gift boxes. You know how normally if like there's something wrong, like they mess up an update or whatever, or maintenance took too long or something like that, we get like two or three or five stones as compensation. Well, this time around, every single JP player got 300 stones. This is a real picture, guys. This is an actual screenshot for main game. Like this actually happened. And obviously it set the Dokkan community on fire and it led to people making posts like this. WTF, I just received 300 stones on my JP account. And there were a ton of posts like this. This is just one example. Um, people were confused. Obviously, they were happy about it because 300 free stones, that's six free multis. But the question was, why? Right? So the reason, according to Bandai now, is because of a visual glitch that happened as a result of a new update in the game. Okay, so at the time, once again, in November of 2017, the newest banner around that time was the Fizz Kefla banner, and Fizz Super Vegito was the newest Dokkan Fest unit, okay? So, obviously, a very long time ago. And uh, earlier that day, update 3.8.0 had just been implemented. I don't remember exactly what kind of changes it brought, but, you know, initially it just seemed like a normal update, you know? Nothing too crazy happened, maybe a few new quality of life changes, something like that. But, you know, nothing too big, nothing that seemed out of the ordinary. And then what happened was that some people went over to their banners and clicked on the scouters and realized that certain characters that were supposed to be available on these banners were actually missing from the scouter information. Okay, so for example, if somebody went into the Fizz Vegito banner, clicked on the scouter, it might show that Fizz Super Vegito wasn't actually on the banner. Same thing with the Kefla banner, I think some people didn't see Kefla in their scatter list either. And of course, the first conclusion that a lot of people immediately went to was that these banners were rigged. I mean, there have always been people out there who have long thought that Bandai, you know, messes with the rates for specific units for each individual account. So maybe somebody would have like a higher chance to pull a certain unit compared to somebody else or they might just like completely remove certain units so you can't pull them no matter how many stones you spend or something like that. And now they had their proof, right? Like the fact that a certain unit was not available on a banner, at least according to the scouter, you know, was concrete evidence that Bandai has been doing this all along. And with the new update, they accidentally revealed to us the real list of units that could be summoned for each individual account or each individual person. And by the way, it wasn't the same units that were missing for every person, right? Like some people maybe didn't have Vegito in there, but some people didn't have Kid Buu, or didn't have Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, or other people didn't have Khalifla, or Kale, or so on and so forth. So the fact that there's the discrepancy between different people also just made it more suspicious. We had people coming out saying, yo, I spent like 2,000 stones for Vegito, and I didn't pull him, and now I know why, because when I looked at my scouter, Vegito wasn't even in there, so I had no chance of pulling Vegito, no matter how many stones I spent. And as you can imagine, when this came out, the outrage in the community, the backlash to the news, was huge. It was insane, right? Because 
if this was legit, if Bandai was actually messing with the featured pool for each account, for each person, and removing certain units that could be summoned, this goes way beyond just the gacha game, far beyond just this fun little Dragon Ball Z themed uh, mobile game we play on our phones. And we're going into some serious illegal activity, you know, fraud, false advertising, uh, breaking a bunch of gambling laws they have in Japan and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, people were super pissed. People were out for blood. We had a few individuals in the community. I think I remember on the subreddit saying they were lawyers or they had family members who were lawyers talking about what kind of legal repercussions or rather legal action we could take against Bandai and Akatsuki to you know, fight back because we're talking about people's money here, right? While most of the player base is still free to play, there are people out there who spend thousands and thousands of dollars on this game, which is fine because that's their money and they're allowed to do whatever they want with it, right? But it's not okay when they're making these decisions based on false information, based on false advertising, right? Being led to believe that they had a chance to get a certain character if they spent the money on the stones to summon on the banners when they really had no chance at all to begin with, right? Like that would be beyond messed up in so many ways, right? So uh, as a response to all this backlash and all this outrage, Bandai decided to pull every single banner from the game, right? They removed the Vegito banner, they removed the Kefla banner and any other banners that were available at the time. And I believe the only banner that was still available to be summoned on in the game at that time was the friend summon banner. And that's it. And of course, Bandai released a statement saying, you know, they know what's going on, they're looking into it, all that stuff. And then, a while later, they released another statement with their official explanation of what happened, why people are seeing different characters in their scouters for different banners, and all that stuff. And according to Bandai, all of this was the result of a server error that occurred as a result of version 3.8.0 that created a visual glitch in the game that caused people to see different characters in their scouter information. And not because people actually, you know, had different uh, characters in their banners, right? So for example, even though Super Vegito wasn't showing on the scouter for some people, it doesn't mean they couldn't pull him on the banner. Like if they summoned, they still had a chance to acquire him. Same thing with the, all the other characters that were missing too, like Kid Buu or Kefla and so on and so forth. So there was nothing fishy going on, it was just a purely visual thing, and uh, they weren't adjusting rates for you know each account or removing certain characters for certain people. All right, I don't know if I actually explained that well. Um, I think there's a person on this post right here that has a better explanation, right? Koala-san on the uh, Dokkan subreddit. Okay, shout out to him, and he says, with the introduction of version 3.8.0, this of course is the uh, Bandai statement, there was an error that would display wrong information in the pullable character list of the gacha. There was a bug in version 3.8.0 where the part that manages the memory didn't function correctly. Therefore, different players got to see different uh, results in the pullable character screen depending on when you opened the list. Because of this bug, memory got overwritten when the app tried to communicate with the server when pressing the scouter button. They have confirmed that the actual characters that could be pulled and the rates were correct even though the bug occurred. They want to reassure everyone once again that rates are not being adjusted for different players. Okay, so there you go. That was the official statement from Bandai or Akatsuki themselves. And uh, because of this, they decided to give every single JP player 300 stones as compensation as well as refunding all of the stones that people spent during the period where this error was occurring, right? So for example, if you spent like a thousand stones on the Kefla banner or 2000 stones on the Vegito banner during the period between when the update came out and when they finally fixed the visual error, then you got all of those stones back. So we saw screenshots of people, you know, posting like thousands of stones in their box from that refund, right? But uh, yeah, there you go guys, that is essentially the full explanation of what the 300 stone compensation situation was. And uh, to this day, there are still some people that believe that this was purely a cover up, right? The 300 stones was, you know, just to shut us up and keep us from asking more questions because there actually was something 
shady going on in the background. And the fact that they gave us so many stones for the compensation just made them even more suspicious, right? Like, why would they feel the need to give so many stones if, you know, the accusations weren't real? Now, if you want to know what I think about it, how I personally feel, I do believe the statement, okay? I do think that it was purely a visual thing and multiple people in the community have come out and confirmed, like a lot of data miners have said that, you know, the rates weren't being rigged and the summonable units that were available on each banner was the same for every single person. It was purely a visual glitch as Bandai had claimed. And the way I see it is that the reason they gave out so many stones, 300 stones is crazy. Like we've never come close to that kind of compensation in the history of the game before that or since, right? Um, the reason they did that was because the backlash was just so huge, right? People were just so upset by the possibility that they had been, you know, duped this entire time, right? So in order to kind of keep the situation a little bit under control, try to, you know, keep their player base, their customers, the people that are paying them happy, they decided to just drop this insane compensation. Now, one other thing that came out from this situation is that a lot of global players were pretty upset because um, one side of the game was getting 300 stones for free while the other side was getting nothing. But uh, we never ended up getting anything and to this day there are still global players that will ask you know, for the 300 stone compensation for certain uh, errors that occur in the game. They're like, oh you know there's a visual glitch here or there's something here like we should get that compensation too. And you know as a global main obviously I would like the stones but I understand why. Okay, I truly understand why we didn't get the stones, because this was an error that occurred exclusively on the JP side. If the exact same thing had happened on Global, then I'm sure we would have had the same compensation. It's just we've never had this exact issue before. Like, we've had similar issues, kind of, but not the exact same. And yeah, since the issue didn't happen on Global, it wouldn't have made any sense if uh, they gave the compensation to Global as well. On top of that, if they did give the same compensation on Global, it would almost be like them coming out and saying, yeah, we rigged the rates for this game, and it's something that has been happening on both sides of the game, so as such, we're gonna give both versions the compensation. Like, they just can't do that. So, uh, for any Global players out there that were confused about why we never got that compensation, that is essentially the reason. All right, so uh, yeah, guys, that is pretty much the video. It's something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while now because I do get questions from newer players all the time about, you know, what this 300 stone meme is. Like, why do people keep asking for 300 stones? Like, what does it mean? So now uh, you know, right? And of course, I gave you guys my opinion about it, my viewpoint, but I want to hear yours as well, both older players who were there when it happened as well as the newer players who just heard it for the first time. Okay, what do you guys think actually happened in this situation? Do you think that the uh, Bandai explanation about the visual glitch was legit? Or are you with the conspiracy theorists out there who still think that, you know, they were rigging the rates and still continue to rig them to this day? And uh, they just gave us that compensation as hush money. Now, I don't know if we can ever be 100 percent sure about the actual answer, but the last thing I'll say is that um, based on my conversations with a bunch of people, the gacha laws and the gambling laws in Japan are extremely, extremely strict. Okay, so I find it hard to believe that a company as big as Bandai would be able to get away with uh, rigging rates or giving their customers false information about banners which they're spending money on um, for this long without any kind of repercussions. Uh, like I said, I don't know 100% for fact. It just seems to me like if something like that was actually happening, then they would have gotten caught a long time ago. And if I actually thought that they were rigging rates, then I would have stopped playing this game a long time ago, right? Like I wouldn't continue to spend money on a game where they're blatantly lying to their customers and to their to their player base so yeah i don't think there was anything suspicious or fishy going on i just think it was genuinely a you know huge error on their end that needed to be controlled as quickly as possible and the 300 stones 
uh, for the most part, I think actually did their job. All right, but uh, that's the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you guys liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you'll like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.